A baker baked 10 cakes of circular shape, but he found that he didn't have enough space to store. Why did this happen? He didn't estimate the space required. The measure of the space needed is to find area. He was confused as he didn't know how to calculate area of circle. The same problem occurred with a decorator. Decorator made an umbrella and he wanted to know what length of the frill is needed to decorate border of the umbrella. So he wanted to know total length of the circular border of that umbrella. Let's help the baker and the decorator to find their measurements, shall we? Okay. What do we call the total length of the sides of a rectangle or a square or a triangle? That's right. We call it the perimeter. Basically, perimeter is the sum of the lengths of the sides of the given geometrical figures. Using this definition, can we also find the perimeter of a circle? But circles don't have a side, do they? So, how can you calculate the perimeter of a circle? Now, what if I have a circular rubber band and I want to calculate its perimeter? Simple. I'll just cut it at one point so that it opens up and I get a single line. We can easily measure this by using a ruler, can't we? And the length of this would be the perimeter of the rubber band. In fact, the perimeter of a circle is known as its circumference. So, what we just calculated for the circular rubber band was also its circumference. In other words, we can also define the circumference of a given circle as the distance covered by traveling once around the circle. Now in order to calculate the circumference of any given circle, we can't always snap it open like a rubber band, right? So we have a fixed formula to calculate the circumference of a given circle, which is 2 into pi into r or 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the circle. Here pi is an irrational number and its value was given by the great Indian mathematician Aryabhat. He stated that the value of pi can be calculated as 62,832 by 20,000 which is approximately equal to 3.14. But for practical purposes, we also assume the value of pi to be 22 by 7. So that was the perimeter of a circle that is its circumference. How do we calculate the area of a given circle? If you remember we saw in the 8th standard that the area of a circle can be calculated by dividing it into multiple sectors and then rearranging them to form an almost rectangular shape, correct? Well, if you don't remember, let's do a quick recap. Say we have a circle with its radius as r and we divide it into 16 sectors by cutting it along its diameters as you can see here. Now we'll take these sectors and arrange them by placing them next to each other so that we get a rectangle. And since this rectangle is formed by using the pieces of the circle itself, its area will be equal to the area of the circle, right? We know the area of a rectangle is given as length into breadth. Here the breadth of the rectangle is the circle's radius. And by the way, the sectors have been arranged. We can see that the length is half of the circumference, which is half of 2 pi r or pi r. So we get the area of the rectangle as r into pi into r, that is, pi into r square. And so the area of the circle is given by the formula pi r square. Now that we know the formula for calculating the circumference and the area of a given circle, let's look at a real life problem. We are given that the wheels of a car are of diameter 80 centimeters each. We have to find the number of complete revolutions made by the wheels in 10 minutes when the car is traveling at a speed of 66 kilometers per hour. First, let's note down what is given to us. We are given the diameter of the wheel, which is equal to 80 centimeters. Therefore, its radius will be half of that, that is 80 by 2. 
that's equal to 40 centimeters. We will convert centimeters into meters by dividing by 100 and so that will give us 40 centimeters is equal to 40 upon 100 meters that is 0 0.4 meters. Also, the time given to us is 10 minutes. Let's convert it into hours by dividing it by 60 and so we get time t is equal to 10 upon 60 hours that is 1 by 6 hours. Now, the speed is given to us as 66 kilometers per hour but we represented the radius of the wheel in meters so let's represent the speed in terms of meters per hour by multiplying the numerator by 1000. That gives us the speed as 66 into 1000 which is equal to 66,000 meters per hour. Using this, we want to find the number of revolutions that the wheel will complete in 10 minutes. First, we know that the distance is equal to speed into time. So, the distance traveled by the wheel in 10 minutes is equal to speed into time, which is equal to 66,000 into the time, which is 1 by 6, which is equal to 11,000 meters. Next, the distance traveled by a wheel in one revolution is nothing but the circumference of the wheel. We can actually visualize it by considering one point, say P, on the surface of the wheel. Let's say that the initial P was in contact with the ground. We'll also mark the point corresponding to P on the ground and call it M. Now, let's say the wheel makes one rotation and moves ahead. Again, since the wheel has made exactly one rotation, the point P will be back in contact with the ground. And this time we'll mark the point corresponding to P on the ground as N. So the point P has traveled a distance of MN on the ground, right? At the same time, since it traveled around the wheel in one rotation to come back to its original position, it means it covered the circumference of the circle. And so we get the length mn is equal to the circumference of the circle. Having understood that, let's get back to our problem now. We will calculate the distance traveled by the wheel in one rotation by equating it to the circumference of the wheel, which is given by the formula 2 into pi into r. Substituting the value of pi as 22 by 7 and r as 0 0.4, we will get 2 into 22 by 7 into 0 0.4. Now, let's not simplify it yet, okay? Hold your horses because this isn't our final answer. We now have to use this to find the number of revolutions of the wheel in 10 minutes. So, the number of revolutions is calculated by dividing the total distance traveled by the wheel in 10 minutes upon the distance traveled by the wheel in one revolution. So, substituting the values from our previous calculations, we will get the number of revolutions as 11,000 upon 2 into 22 by 7 into 0 0.4. Now, since 7 is the denominator of the denominator, it can be taken to the numerator. Also, we can write it as 0 0.4 as 4 by 10 and take the 10 in the numerator. And so this expression will become 11,000 into 7 into 10 upon 2 into 22 into 4. Dividing 11,000 and 22 by 11, we get 1,000 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. We can then cancel out 10 with 2, which gives us 5 in the numerator. Next, cancelling out 1,000 with 2 gives us 500 in the numerator and 500 divided by 4 gives us 125. So we get 125 into 5 into 7. This product is equal to 4375. So we get the number of revolutions that the wheel makes as 4375. Tutomate. For more amazing video lectures, Download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.